Hello, anyone, everyone, and no one. My name is Slack Lizard, and welcome back to another episode of Farm of the Week. And this week on Farm of the Week, we have a goat farm in store for you. Now, this farm here is a relatively small and compact goat farm that produces in excess of over 4,000 drops per hour. Now, that does include rotten flesh in that as well, but let's face it, this day and age, rotten flesh is a valuable thing as well. You can use it to trade for emeralds with villagers and so on and so forth. That being that, this farm here today that we are going to be showcasing off is a modified version of the giant one that T-Man designed here recently. And the way that we go about dealing with the a drop shoot you can apply to that farm as well if you currently have that farm built onto your world and if you're not looking for a farm that big then well we've got one here for you today that being that let's get a materials list of what you're going to need for this thing and let's get to the tutorial shall we As per usual with any farm of the week, I would highly recommend checking the pinned comments down below for any updates or changes that are needed with these farms. And if you are getting no response in that regard, I would also consider checking the Discord. The Discord is probably going to be the quickest and easiest way for you to get feedback on farms. One additional thing that I want to add is about chunk borders. This farm itself doesn't necessarily have to be chunk aligned, but I would advise that the trident killer be placed with inside of a singular chunk because bedrock and entities going across chunk borders are just not a good thing to have going on. So if you need a tutorial on how to find chunks in survival without the add on of a resource pack, there will be a link down below. And an editing slack coming in here for an additional disclaimer here. You need to build this farm in a nether waste, not in a crimson biome, not in a basalt delta, not in a soul sand valley, not in a warped biome, not inside of a fortress or a bastion. I'm talking to you, coffee, but a nether waste. One of these nice, boring biomes with nothing but pretty much nether rack around here. Not that back there, this over here. And of course, you need to build this farm while considering your AFK spot. And where is your AFK spot? Exactly right beside the hopper that we're going to begin with in the tutorial. And you need to make sure that within 44 blocks, there's nothing else in here where mobs can spawn. So if you do not have access to this resource pack, you're just gonna have to do a lot of digging. Can't really give you a cheaty cheat on this one to tell you, you know, how to find, you know, the border. You, you just kind of have to dig it out. So we're going to begin things with our trident killer here leading into our collection system. The collection system we will cover at the end of this video. So we're going to add a couple of hoppers in right here. We're going to place down a rail right there. And then, of course, we are going to surround this rail in blocks. That way, our minecart that we place down here will not be moving around. And then we're going to put our minecart with hopper right there. From here, we're going to go ahead and grab our hay bales. And we're going to put one, two, three, and four hay bales like so. And then we're going to surround this whole thing right here in glass. This is going to be the base of our trident killer here, where our mobs are going to fall down from the top of our goat farm to the bottom of the goat farm. Now we want hay bales here so that not all the mobs die on impact because we're going to want to use looting in a trident killer to get as much goat out of this farm as possible. From here, let's go ahead and grab our pistons and we're going to place in a piston right there, 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 and there. And we're going to grab glass and fill in all these other spots like so until you get a layer that looks just like that. Once you're done with that point, let's go ahead and grab a solid block of choice and we're going to put a solid block above every one of the pistons. Once we've got that done, let's grab our powered rails and a powered rail goes on the corner like so. From here, let's go ahead and grab our observers. We're going to have an observer watching into that powered rail there. We're going to have an observer watching into that powered rail right there. Same with this side over here and this side over here. And at this point, if we grab a lever, place it on here anywhere that we want on one of these powered blocks, we can now turn on and off our trident killer. So at this point, it's fine to go ahead and add your tridents into the farm. Now, with all of the testing that T-Man and I have done in relation to trident killers in the past, we have found that two tridents inside of your trident killer 
will kill mobs faster than one alone. I must state though that anything more than two, you're just pretty much wasting your time. You don't need more than that. So now once you've got all that in place, it's time to build our drop column or this farm. So we're going to come on top of our blocks right here and we're going to pillar up with glass or a solid block if you choose. I prefer glass because I can see what's going on. 18 blocks in total. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 and we're going to do that all the way around until you get something that looks just like so now from here we're going to go ahead and grab a piece of glass and we're going to choose anywhere that we want up here and we're going to put a piece of glass right there and from there we're going to put a turtle egg on top of that this is going to be our center point of our farm and the build from here on out so from here we need to go out nine blocks in all directions from that turtle egg so we go one two three four five six seven eight and nine we're going to do the same thing on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Then, of course, this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And let's go ahead and fill this all in as a big solid square now, connecting all the corners up together. And now that we've connected up all of our corners here and filled in the whole platform, it's time to do a little bit of modifying to this platform. And we're modifying after the fact because it's easier to explain for tutorial purposes. So we're going to come over here to this corner here, and this is going to be block number one that we're going to remove. Two, three, four, and five. And of course, we're going to do that that way as well. So that would be block one, two, three, four, and five. And of course, these two right here, one, two, and that one need to be removed as well so that we can round off our corner. Now, if you need to see this again, let's go ahead and do this again. So you got one, two, three four and five and of course block number one's already gone so two three four and five one two one two and do that on the other side as well and if you're curious as to why we're removing those we're removing those because if a zombie pigman were to spawn out here on this block he would not see the turtle egg and he would not aggro to it and he would just stand there forever so by removing those blocks anywhere that a zombie pigman spawns inside of here in the future he will always aggro to that turtle egg and go to our drop shoot and into our trident killer and speaking of our trident killer it's now time to get our drop shoot going into our trident killer as well so we're going to come back above here and we're going to find two blocks that are directly above our trident killer and we are going to knock both of those out additionally below our turtle egg here we had a piece of glass here and we're going to go ahead and remove that and we're going to go ahead and place in a trap door there now once we've got that piece of glass removed and our trap door in place here it's time to build up around this so we're going to grab Two pieces of glass and put there, two pieces there, and two pieces there. From here, we're going to go ahead and grab a trap door, and we're going to put a trap door there, there, and there. We're going to go ahead and put those in that position. Then we're going to put one there, there, and there, and we're going to go ahead and flip those up into that position there. From here, we're going to go ahead and add in our coral fans right here, which at this point, you could put trap doors if you want to there. Through all of our testing, we've noticed that trap doors have a hitbox while the coral fans do not. And occasionally, with trap doors being there versus coral fans, you will have mobs that will stand on the edge and slow down the production of goad in this farm. And that is the first layer of this farm done, which it's not complicated at all, people. It's not complicated at all. And now you need to do this six more times. And as you can see there, just like that, this farm is done operational. We done got pigmen dropping down to the bottom. It's that simple, people. So let's go ahead and move over to our storage system now. And to start out our collection system, we're going to need an area to work with. So we're going to come down here one, two three, four, and five blocks below our storage system there. And we're going to place in one additional block right there for our sixth block. From here, we're going to come out one, two, three, four, and five in that direction. And we're going to come out one, two, three, four, and five in this direction. And we're going to go out 20 blocks in total. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And we're going to fill all of this in to give us a nice platform to work from. I would advise a non-spawnable block because you don't want stuff spawning here. Just, just saying. And now once you've got a nice 
bond proof platform to work from, we are going to extend out this hopper line here. So coming from the end of that hopper there, we're going to go out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 blocks. And we're going to place a hopper going into that last block we placed right there. From here, we're going to go ahead and work our way back, removing each of our temporary blocks and running hoppers into every one of those hoppers. Now you should end up with a hopper line uh, just like so. So from here, we're going to go ahead and add in our stackable item sorters. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down one block from this hopper here, and we're going to place eight blocks across like so. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we're going to grab our hoppers and we're going to put a hopper going into each of those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, just like so. So you got this row going that way. You got that row going that way and that's going to be our item sorters from here let's go ahead and grab a piece of glass and we're going to put a piece of glass right there so you got one two three four five six seven and eight we're going to grab solid blocks put on that side i think you all see a pattern here one two three four five six seven eight at this point, let's go ahead and grab some comparators, and we're going to put eight comparators across the back between these two solid blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now we need to go down a layer. So we're going to come down here, and we're going to place a solid block there, or a temporary block there, and place a solid block there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I think you're all starting to catch the pattern here. Let's go ahead and go across to the other side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight at this point let's go ahead and grab our glass blocks once again so let's place a temporary block right here glass block right there remove the temporary block and put redstone dust on top of that so you got one two three make sure you go ahead and dust those as you're going four five and six dust on top of that and seven and eight and dust on top of that and then come around here to this row here and put dust all across the top of these and then, of course, redstone dust all the way across the top of these here. From here, let's go ahead and grab some redstone torches, and we're going to put eight redstone torches across here. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now that we have all of those in place, let's go ahead and grab two temporary blocks. We're going to place one there and there, and we're going to grab a hopper, and we're going to place a hopper going into that temporary block like so. So now we've got a hopper line going that way, one going that way, and then an additional one coming this way. As you can see, it is now locked. This hopper here is going to be what leads into our storage system. So we're going to go ahead and place eight temporary blocks across the front here. We're going to grab our hoppers and a hopper is going into each of those like so. And once that's done, we can go ahead and remove our temporary blocks Across the front we can go ahead and get some barrels or chests we're going to use chests for this tutorial and we're going to place chests all the way across the front like this so you got one chest there connect it up make that into a double so you got one two three four five six seven and eight now we're going to come down here and we're going to step this out one and the reason we're going to step this out one is so that anything that ends up in the top chest will always end up draining into the next chest and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and place those all the way across here until we have eight chests across the front. And then we're going to place hoppers going into each of those just like so. And now you can add as much additional storage onto this as you want. So we're going to go ahead and come across here, across there and add in another set of double chests all the way across the front. We're going to go ahead and grab another row of hoppers and we're going to run hoppers into every one of those. And now we have multiple chests here for storage. And now at this point, it's time to go ahead and put in our item filters here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to designate two of these for rotten flesh. We're going to designate three of these for gold nuggets. And of course, we're going to designate the other three for any ingots that come from the farm. So with any item sorter here, we need to take four named items of some kind that are not going to enter into the farm. So it wouldn't be ideal to put rotten flesh in here as the filter because it could stack in with the filter. So the best thing that I can just tell you is to get some arbitrary item i don't care if it sticks or whatever and just rename them sorter items name them whatever you want just name them something that is not default 
in the game and place four of them like so. So you got one, two, three, and four. And now if we place Rotten Flesh in here, you'll see our Rotten Flesh starts counting down. The reason being is the comparator reads a signal strength and says, oh, there's X amount of Rotten Flesh in here. We're going to send a signal out. We're going to unlock this hopper and let Rotten Flesh flow through. So whatever item is in your first slot here is going to be your designated filter item. So if you want to save Rotten Flesh, you're going to put Rotten Flesh there. If you want to save Goad, you would put Goad in there instead. So as we're going to do here, we're going to designate these first two to Rotten Flesh. They're going to continue to count down. And the next one we're going to designate as Goad. So we're going to put one, two, three, and four filter items here. And we're going to put in our Goad Nuggets. And we're going to do that for this one as well. Place in our Goad Nuggets and so on and so forth. You do not have to start with a full stack of your item of choice here you can start off with just one you at least need one in the farm though and then once it reaches the required number of 41 at this point and clicks over to 42 it will let through your items now as i demonstrated there on accident you do not ever want to have a situation where you've got your sorted items being able to filter into the farm that's why once you're done with whatever you choose as your sorter item i would advise burning it that way it never ends up in here you want these to be so uniquely named that they will never end up in the farm that being that let's go ahead and make this one into gold ingots let's do the same with the next one two three and four put gold ingots in here and do the same with the last one as well one two three and four and then we're going to add our gold ingots now at this point we now have a lot of items assorted into this farm we're sorting out our rotten flesh we're sorting out our gold and we're sorting out our golden ingots but that's not all this farm produced. Most goad farms out there, I would say about a third of the goad that come, come from the farm, because we're using looting and a trident killer, come from the swords. So we need to filter out the swords and smelt them down as well. So now we need to add in our non-stackable item filters. And these things work almost identical to our stackable ones with the exception of they are just up a block higher we are going to be taking a signal strength from this hopper here instead of the lower one down below so let's go ahead and add in two blocks right there one block away from the others here and we're going to place in our second row of blocks right there from here let's go ahead and add in two pieces of glass let's add in our two comparators so let's go ahead and come down here and add in our two blocks down below just like so put redstone dust on top of those once again and down underneath of here we're going to place in two glass blocks we're going to put in redstone dust on those we're going to grab our solid blocks and put solid blocks in right there and this right here is pretty much our item sorter done with the exception of adding in our redstone torches. Now this will grab any non-stackable item and send them out to a hopper line that we're gonna place over here. So from here, let's go ahead and place in a few temporary blocks like so over here. Let's grab some hoppers and have a hopper going into that, 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 and that. And now all of our swords should end up going into this hopper line right here. Now that we have those hoppers in there, let's go ahead and tie all this into a smelting array. So we're going to add in two hoppers going underneath of that. We're going to add a blast furnace there and there. You can use a regular furnace if you would like in this situation. I'm going to use a blast furnace because it smelts down swords and such faster. Once we have the blast furnaces in place, we're going to go ahead and come underneath of here and we're going to add in two chests across the front just like so. Hopper going into that one, hopper going into that one. We're going to add a hopper going into the front here and a front here, and we're going to put a double chest right there. This double chest right here is our fuel chest. So let's go ahead and open this up and throw a fuel into the farm. And now at this point, any gold swords that are produced by this farm will end up going into our non-stackable item filters right here, end up in our blast furnace and end up as gold nuggets in this chest here. From here, this farm is pretty much done and dusted with the exception we need to add in a burnificator on the end. I would always recommend a burnificator on any kind of farm that you're going to AFK. If you're storage system fills up you have nowhere for the drops to go there's no point in generating extra lag on a server or a world you know i don't think you would like corrupting your world just because you had too many items there and couldn't load it up so a burnificator is your best friend 
So to add in our burner fricator, we're going to come to the end of our hopper line right here and we're going to add in two additional hoppers going straight down. And then we are going to put a dropper right here pointing off to the side. This is where all of our items are going to be uh, thrown out and going into lava. And speaking of lava, we need a chamber to catch all this. So let's go ahead and build a box around this just like a so and put our lava in right there. From here, let's grab our non-spawnable blocks and build out four blocks this way and four blocks that way. Let's go ahead and grab a redstone comparator, which is going to be taking a signal strength out of this dropper. So anytime it gets something in there, it will power this comparator. And now we need to run this into a small kind of repeating circuit. So we're going to put a repeater right there. We're going to put another redstone comparator right here. And we're going to right click on this to have that light on there, which puts it into subtract mode. From here, let's go ahead and place some redstone dust going back into that comparator. Place it going right by this repeater and going into another repeater right there. And let's put a solid block right there. From here, let's also put a piece of glass on top of that to spawn proof this. And now anything that ends up in here is now going to be barnificated at insanely fast speeds. You don't want to die in your own trident killer because your stuff will disappear before you can even get to it. And that is pretty much this farm all done and sorted. The last thing that you need to do is go ahead and spawn proof all of these blocks that are exposed up here on the top, just like so. That way you will not get no mobs spawning on top of them. And now the last thing to add in here is a spot for you to AFK. Now you're going to want to be AFKing directly underneath of this farm. And if you're wanting to collect the XP, you need to AFK pretty much underneath of this hay bale right here so you would go ahead and grab you some blocks of choice preferably non-spawnable blocks and build you a small little afk room right here underneath of this hay bale now if you're worried about that minecart coming out there you can target just that rail and let that be broken and then you can sit right here collect all the xp you want and get all the gold that you could want from this farm now of course this farm only produces as we said around 30 blocks of gold per hour but it is a small and simple build that i feel anybody out there could do that being that i think that's where we're going to call this one a farm of the week be interested to know if you've built this farm and what results you get from it and i think that right there is where we're going to call this one a tutorial if you've enjoyed it make sure to drop a like if you'd like to see more please consider subscribing and we will see all of you all in the next one goodbye everybody